What follows in this video are some of the common fallacies which pro-metric people make when supporting the metrification of the U.S. or the mistakes which they generally make. For those who don't know what a logical fallacy is, it is an error in the sequence of reasoning, which means that the conclusion does not follow in deductive logic or does not strongly follow in inductive or abductive logic which results in a bad argument, which means that the conclusion is unreliable. It is a break in one's logic, if you will. Example 1. In what you ought to know's metric versus imperial presentation, we are given the following table. Which is better, metric or imperial? What are their pros and cons? This is easy, because there's only one for each. Pro. It makes sense, and virtually everyone uses it. Con. It doesn't make any sense. At all. You want proof? Try this in your head. What's one kilometer minus 20 decameters plus three meters minus 25 centimeters? It's easy. It's 802.75 meters. That's what it is. All right, now what about a mile minus 10 yards plus two feet minus an inch and a half? You don't have any idea, and I don't either. Let's see, that's 1,750 yards plus two feet. I should be doing this in feet. And I didn't even use any obscure measurements like furlongs or fathoms. In case you're wondering, the answer is 5,251 feet, 10 and 1 half inches. I'm not a show-off. I had to work for it. And for you skeptics, need I say more? Okay, fine, I will. Mix two gallons with six pints and three quarts, stir it up, and take out three cups. How much is left? You probably can't remember how many pints are in a cup and how many cups are in a quart. You probably didn't even catch that I just said them in the wrong order. The answer is three gallons, two pints, and one cup. It's not a broken system, just a lousy one. On the flip side, you mix six liters with 22 centiliters and eight deciliters and then take out 160 milliliters. How much is left? 1,001. Time's up. 6.86 liters. Okay, rewind. It's all arbitrary. At some point, somebody made something up as a standard to measure things by. First fallacy. Selectively using quote-unquote facts, a.k.a. card stacking, a.k.a. stacking the deck in one's favor. When a person manipulates the audience's perception of an issue by emphasizing one side and repressing another, and or when a person tells only or mostly favorable quote-unquote facts about the side which they support and only or mostly disfavorable quote-unquote fa facts about the side which they oppose. This tactic is very common in politics. In other words, said person is selectively manipulating the truth in their favor. This is not only fallacious, but assuming that they know better is also dishonest as they are not representing both sides fairly. Also notice that his evaluation is very relative. Easy and stinks are dependent upon to whom you're talking and what criteria are being used. Notice the parts about where he does all that math with the given metric and imperial units and uses it as quote-unquote evidence against the imperial system. This is the irrelevant thesis slash conclusion fallacy. It may be true that the metric system is faster for conversion, but neither is that the point of the imperial system nor does it mean that the metric system as a whole is better. This is also hasty conclusion reasoning, coming to a conclusion based upon a small number of all the elements without carefully considering the others, or rushing to a conclusion without carefully considering alternatives. Quote, metric is faster with conversion, therefore better, unquote. He has taken into account only conversion speed with no regard for any other element. Lastly, he starts off his argument by presupposing that the metric system has complete merit and that the imperial system has no merit, and he concludes that the metric system has complete merit and that the imperial system has no merit. This is circular logic slash reasoning slash thinking, a use of reason or an argument in which at least one premise is equivalent to or depends upon the conclusion, in which case one has ended up with what one has started out with. Thus, no useful information has been given 
which helps to discover the truthfulness of the conclusion and thus the argument. E.g. A is true because A is true or A is the truth because B is reliable. B is reliable because C is correct and C is correct because A is true. Our imperial measurements outdated with Matt Parker. Here our host, Matt Parker, tells us about how quote-unquote sorry he is for disrespecting the imperial system. It has very recently been brought to my attention that during my number hub video on the A4 paper scale, I made an apparently unwarranted number of attacks on the imperial system of measurement, and I would like entirely voluntarily to apologize. Why wouldn't you take a barley corn as the basis of your system of measurement should you be, I don't know, hypothetically, an industrialized modern superpower? And to apologize, I'm now going to give you the number hub guide to the imperial measurement system because it all hangs together so nicely. You take three barley corns, that gives you an inch. You then take 12 inches, that gives you a foot. You take three feet, it gives you a yard. You take 1,760 yards, you get a mile. A mile, alternatively, you can split into eighths. Each eighth of a mile is a furlong. Of those furlongs, you can divide them into tenths and you get a Gunther's chain. Each Gunther's chain you can divide into elevenths and that gives you a fathom. If you take 15 fathoms, you get a shackles. Or alternatively, if you take 100 fathoms, you get a cable. You take 10 cables, you get a nautical mile. A nautical mile, of course, being wildly different from a standard mile. If you take three nautical miles, you get a league. Or alternatively, if you take a nautical mile and split it into feet, you get 6,080 feet. We're back at feet. If you take a foot and you divide it in thirds, you get what's called a hand. Of course, a hand is exactly the third the size of a foot. Each hand, if you cut it in half, you get a stick. Each stick, if you cut it in half, What our host, Matt Parker, has extremely conveniently excluded from his quote-unquote apology is that the average American uses only the inch, foot, yard, and mile, and sometimes the centimeter. Most Americans haven't even heard any of the gobbledygook which he is talking about and presents it as if Americans use it normally. This is a variant of stacking the deck in one's favor, the straw man fallacy i.e. the act of distorting, exaggerating, or misrepresenting a person's or one's opponent's true claims, beliefs, ideas, etc., which may include some truthful information, but is incomplete and or supplied misleadingly, a.k.a. creating the straw man, then arguing against this new misleading version of the original, a.k.a. beating the straw man, which is a form of misleading discourse. This is another common political tactic. How he presents the information suggests that the average American user has an overly complicated standard when in fact that is not the case, nor do they typically convert from one unit to another. And all across the media, you will see this fallacy. It has many names, but I will list just three. The false dichotomy, aka the either-or fallacy, aka binary thinking fallacy, i.e. falsely assuming that there are only two mutually exclusive options or that there is no middle ground when in reality there is at least one more option or some middle ground. Why not use the metric system for international stuff and the imperial system for home? A common answer may be something like, quote, because we will avoid miscommunication amongst all humans, with one standard, there will be no confusion amongst us humans." Uncle. So, going by that logic, and if said person is going to be consistent with that philosophy, then wouldn't that mean that any one nation would therefore be justified in getting rid of bilingualism, trilingualism, etc., and promoting only its own language unto all other nations under the banner of, quote, we wish to avoid miscommunication amongst all humans, unquote. And while that's happening, why not discard all other cultures, philosophies, opinions, etc., and replace them with any one nation's? Doing that would definitely avoid miscommunication. Further, you could robotify every human so that there are no longer any emotion-based miscommunications slash problems. 
that's what it would take to be consistent with the common, quote, avoid miscommunication amongst all humans, unquote, notion. Does that seem fair and reasonable to you? If a person can effectively communicate between two languages, then so too can a person effectively communicate between two measuring standards. Now then, the shocker part and my response to all the pro metric slash SI people who make such a big deal about conversion and conversion speed. Conversion is of little, if any, importance. Of course, in science and math and the like, conversion and conversion speed may be very significant as is precision, but in everyday life, it's of little, if any, consequence. The imperial system was made for why we need measurements, visualization. Every unit of measurement has been made just right for a precise range. The flaw of that is that the different units don't have simple convertibility, but why would that be a necessary everyday element? Assuming that you are not a scientist, a mathematician, an architect, or the like, in your entire life thus far, how many times had you needed to convert anything? Not very many, if any. If it is smaller than an inch, you use centimeters or millimeters. If it fits in your lap, you use inches. If it's bigger than that, you use feet. If you're doing football, running exercises, or something similar to those things, you use yards. And if you're going across the country, you use miles. But most folks are more likely to use time for trips and such and things alike. Each unit was designed for a specific range, and they serve those ranges very well, and thus cutting down on those overly big, small, or many digited numbers. The only time you need to convert is usually 90 plus percent of the time, because someone insists on using the metric and or SI systems and talk about how great their conversion speed is, particularly on the internet. Some general principles to follow if you are trying to find a reliable source of information regarding any debate, argument, critique, etc. Are both sides being represented fairly? If there are only positive quote-unquote facts about one side and only negative quote-unquote facts about the other, then the presenter is likely being unfairly biased and one should be skeptical about that source. How in depth do they go about the subject as a whole? If they speak only on one element of the whole subject which favors the side which they support, then they are likely being unfair. How long does the presentation last? The typical political propaganda infomercial lasts between 20 seconds to about 3 minutes, and the typical overly bias written report is only about one page long, in which time they speak only disfavorably about the other side while speaking only favorably about their own. The general rule of thumb for time length for a fair presentation from the TV, radio, internet, etc. should be at least approximately five minutes and papers approximately two to three pages worth. What is the behavior of the presenter? Generally, when a person acts overly sarcastically, angrily, hastily, or a plethora of other behaviors, there is good reason to question the presenter's fairness and sincerity. This is not an ad hominem, mind you, i.e., the conclusion is necessarily false because of the person who's doing the talking, but a potential tip-off about the fairness of the presenter. Do your own research. Even the best and the most fair make mistakes sometimes, so doing your own research helps to protect you from error. And lastly, but most importantly, plain old-fashioned good sportsmanship and common sense. Basing your decisions or beliefs exclusively upon a broadcast, infomercial, video, etc., which is less than five minutes long, and a written report which is only about one page long is not a good idea. Again, do your own research. Be fair. Choose your sources wisely. Hear out both sides. Give the other guy the benefit of the doubt, 
by sincerely trying to understand their side from their perspective and make well-informed decisions. Thank you.